This conference will now be recorded. Okay, this is our ANCAN high risk advanced uh, recurrent prostate cancer group for Tuesday, March 14th, second one of this month. We meet weekly. Uh, let me first mention our sponsors that we're proud to have um, Bayer, Pfizer Oncology, Myovant, Janssen, which is a part of Johnson & Johnson, Janssen Pharmaceuticals, Myriad Genetics. And we're very proud and happy to have these as our sponsors, these companies. Um, we do not endorse their products. Uh, we are not beholden to them, but we are very happy that they recognize the value of peer support groups, and we uh, we honor that. Uh, this is kind of new in the last couple of years, and um, we're just very very grateful for their support. It allows us to do carry on our business, carry on our meetings, our webinars, and. And and uh, also Helix. Uh, don't, don't forget Helix because we just added them. Mm. And, and for those of you who don't know Helix, um, Helix makes. Uh, Work it out so your name or who's trying to speak. I need to speak, uh, um, Peter. It's Rick. Can you hear me? Yeah, it's garbled, but I can hear you. Um, I'm wondering if you're having a problem with your connection, because I am hearing, I know you didn't hear Rick Fitch correctly, before, Dave Fitch correctly before. Um, yeah, I was just saying that Telix is um, another sponsor, and Telix makes Elucix, which is one of the Gallium 68 scanning products. Are they now our sponsor? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't show up on the website yet. Okay. Got it. So so we are also sponsored by Telix, which makes the Gallium 68 PSMA scan. And we're thankful for them. Uh, Spencer just joined. Spencer, is this your first time on? Uh, yeah. Uh, I was on for just a little while, uh, a couple of weeks ago. But this is my first time um, for a full okay. session. Okay. Okay. We'll get you in. So we have three new gentlemen on the. Peter, uh, I can't hear you. I don't know if anyone else can. I can't no, hear you, Tom. You can't hear me? Now I know. You're, you're, you're cutting in and out, Peter. Your, your connection is cutting in and out. My connection is cutting in and out. Really? You sound, you sound fine now. I think you're it's hearing something. Does everybody else hear me cutting in and out? Is that what's going on? No, you're, you're good fine. now. Yeah. You're okay now. You're good now. Okay. Peter. Keep going. We're going to start with Rick in Bahaba, Maine. Uh, Rick, what's what's your last name? My last name is Klopstein, Richard Klopstein. Oh, okay. So you're the friend you're, you're the friend of David Muslin. A very recent friend, yes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Um, and how old are you, Rick? I'm 66. Oh. Right there in the sweet spot. That's the average. That's when I was diagnosed. And you live in Bar Harbor. Yes. And when, when were you first diagnosed? January of 2023, two months ago. Okay. And at that time, um, what led, led you to this diagnosis? Were you having pain symptoms or something? or? Uh, high PSA, what, what led you to be, uh, I imagine you went to a urologist first, yes? 
uh, <clears throat> I have no symptoms. I had a, a primary care uh, annual physical, actually a semi-physical. They did my first PSA in six years. I had done several before that. And that's a whole separate story. But uh, through that process in mid to late December, I've uh, gone through a litany of tests that I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar with. And I can digress and go identify what I've done th uh, in the last two months. But um, my, uh, my Gleason's are, um, are uh, four, point, 4 plus 3 is 7, left and right, a great group 3. Uh, I have a PSA of 62 um, in December. It's actually climbed to 88 about four weeks ago. Um, I've done, you know, almost every test that I think is imaginable. I'm sure there's some that I haven't, but, um, you know, a truss, uh, I did a biopsy. Obviously, you know that from my, uh, from my scores. I did uh, imaging bone and also uh, CT. Is this what you want to hear and how I, how you want yes, to understand? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I did the NM and the CT. I, uh, I did genomic testing with Foundation One. I don't think it's uh, pertinent, as I understand from my oncologist. I, uh, I did a PSMA, a PET scan, about, oh, almost 30 days ago. And uh, it is metastasized. Uh, uh, the Mets are uh, two in the rib and, and uh, one in the lower vertebrae. And of course, in my lymph nodes. So I have those spots. Um, I, um, and that's, that's basically the thing that I've done. And wh where, are you, where are you being treated? Who, who are you seeing as I have, your primary uh, care physician? What kind yeah, of doctors? Well, I have a primary care, of course, the last seven years. I've only moved here seven years ago. I used to live in Southern California for 35 years, but um, I have a primary care here. Um, I then saw a urologist locally. I was referred to a local oncologist, and uh, almost immediately I started uh, asking for a referral, so I went to a Mass General Hospital in Boston. Okay, and and, who are you uh, seeing at Mass General? Well, my first visit was Dr. Solari, which was a uh, uh, an oncologist, surgical oncologist. Of course, I'm not a candidate for that. And then he referred me to Mark Mike, uh, Mark Michelson, who's a um, MD, PhD. I think he's the co-director of the GU unit at Boston. And I met with okay. him uh, three weeks ago, two weeks ago now, and uh, along with a radio radiation oncologist that's on you know at the hospital as well and and a third doctor that was his uh, setup doctor i'm going to continue talking did we lose peter or does someone else want to participate in the q a yeah, I, I I do think we did lose Peter. Um, I think he's. My guess is he's having internet problems from 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 before. Um, so, um, what treatment at this point have they have they placed you on? This is Rick Davis, by the way. Uh, Rick. Hi, Rick. Uh, do, do you uh, prefer Do you prefer Rick, Rick, or Richard? Uh, Rich is fine. Thank you for asking. No problems. Anything, but Rich is fine. Okay. So what um, what do they what treatment have they placed you on, Rich? Oh, Peter's back. So last okay. week, I, last week I started Lupron. Uh, I guess an acronym for Lupro, uh, Luprolide. And uh, mm -hmm. two, two days later, started with Delarotamide. Uh, I guess the acronym is New Nubeca. Do I pronounce that correctly? I'm still. Right familiar with the terminology so I've really been on that for you know not not even eight days ten days so I just started that process uh, dr. Michelson is recommending radiation uh, IMRT and VMAT in two to three months you know based on how I react to these medications and I believe that's the uh, direction I'm heading towards now that's a good recommendation. I was going to ask you if anybody had spoken to you about treating the primary, and a lot of times we find they, that the docs don't. So um, I think Michelson's on the board. I don't know Michelson. Um, the the only uh, doc I 
that that comes to mind at MGH that I know is 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 Matthew Smith, who, who's the um, I think the chief there, certainly of the GU group. Um, but um, I like the fact. I think we all like the fact that he's already talking to you about um, the RT, and it also makes a lot of sense that um, with just three. Well, I shouldn't say just three spots. How how many nodal spots did they see, Rich? Do you recall? Two ribs and a lower back bay, and how many places in the nodes did they see? Uh, that I'm a little bit unfamiliar with. It's on my right lymph nodes. Um, it's 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 there. Um, mm -hmm. I can't quantify it tonight. I'm sorry. I'm just I, I, okay. I've got four inches of reports and files here, but I'm not going to refer to them in this call. And and we'll get you. Come a month from now, you'll be a lot more comfortable with all this stuff. Russ, that, that, I think we can safely say that. I think most of the guys will tell you that right now you're a deer in the headlights, but attending these groups is going to help you a, a huge amount. Um, I was going to talk a little bit about this doublet triplet um, issue, and I, I did send you the. Um, I sent you that uh, complicated meta-analysis yesterday. I don't know how much you were able to pick out of that, but um, it, it's, an, it's an interesting topic and it's interesting to everybody on this call right now um, because over the past couple of years, um, people that have high volume met on diagnosis de novo metastatic like you, de novo metastatic means you are metastatic on diagnosis and people who are de novo metastatic um, with a high volume of METs meaning more than five or six spots um, have, have usually been um, advised to consider chemotherapy up front along with what you're doing. The problem is that when you look very hard at the test results, you're not really sure if the chemo adds anything or not. It may do. I mean, it certainly takes away from your quality of life, um, but it's not 100% clear. And, and I think that's what we largely, from this meta study, and it was an observation that Len wanted to make, and I'm saying this not so much for you, Rich, but for everybody on the call because it's a hot topic in the in the uh, recurrent advanced cancer world right now. Len, do you do you, you want to say something about about this doublet triplet issue and the choice that Michelson has made for for um, for Rich? Uh, Rick, I don't think I'd add anything to what you said. It is still somewhat uh, controversial as to exactly what the addition of docetaxel uh, accomplishes. Uh, I think, in a sense, you are getting triplet therapy. You've got ADT, you've got a second-line antiandrogen, and you're going to have radiation therapy. So it's just, I guess, we, we would ask you to talk to your oncologist about adding docetaxel and see what uh, they have to say about it. I, I, if I can add, I, I've, well, it's a good acronym, deer in the headlights, because my local oncologist recommends chemo. He's perplexed why and hasn't read the reports yet of uh, Boston. But with that said, uh, we, we spent a bit of time with both my radiologist and, uh, and Dr. Michelson, the, uh, the hematology oncologist about that he he was they're strong they're biased towards the radiation um, um, and something that was mentioned was that they've had no patients that have had both I, I was I was I was under the impression that they were not mutually exclusive but they didn't have any patients in my category that have had both chemo and the uh, radiation so that's just a if I recall a statement and it adds to what I've heard I was on one I was on, I've already listened to a couple of your YouTubes, and I did uh, 
I did view Dr. Schultz's uh, presentation of a few weeks ago. So you're right, I am catching up. And I just want to, before I leave this uh, juncture, I just want to thank everybody. What I've seen already is impressive and I appreciate everyone's dedication. And uh, I'm looking forward to being a participant in this group. Yeah, I think the, the I think what they're saying is that, that they haven't had anybody get the chemo and the radiation at the same time there are usually what we see happen is that if you're doing the chemo and somebody like herb geller is a good example um they'll finish up the chemo and then they'll talk about treating the primary which is the glands and we see that quite often now a lot more frequently than we did say two or three years ago um but i think I can't recall anybody who's done the chemotherapy and the radiation uh, concurrently. I don't know, can any of the other moderators think of anybody that, that's done them both concurrently? Sequentially, definitely. No, I'm not aware of that. Yeah, I've never heard of it. <clears throat> uh, Rich, what's your overall health status? Aside from the prostate cancer, um, <clears throat> that's a good question. Um, I think I'm pretty healthy. I walk about two miles a day on average, day in day out. I've got a lab that helps me. We're on an island, Acadia National Park, so I love this area. Um, I'm pre-diabetes, but I've lost 20 pounds in two months. Um, I have a rare, rare nerve disorder called tremegula neuralgia. Um, I won't go into details, but I was pretty well pushed down to, uh, I was referred down to Boston three years ago. So three years and two months, I had brain surgery that alleviated that. And I, I frankly feel that I have a second lease on life. So that's my personal perspective on that. I, I love that hospital. I've seen nothing but great results personally for me. And I'm looking forward to, you know, this process as I may, as I live here to, you know, be, be, uh, be held by this group, uh, this GU group. So for me, that's a red flag not to get chemo, uh, which often causes peripheral neuropathy. So if you've already had uh, neuropathy, um, you know, when you have a discussion about this with your oncologist, make sure they understand your your medical history with the i think you said was it trigeminal uh trigeminal neuralgia it's a blood vessel yeah. and a nerve vessel that for me it was back here and i you know it's i think 43 out of 50 on the pain scale when doctors yeah. use that but that's good len what you just said i i do take metforum and it's to help alleviate some of the neuropathy that i did have and uh you know that's one of my biggest worries not a worry but it's a it's, it's something that my surgery might last anywhere from eight to 12 years on average. So it could I was going to say the same thing, Rich. You know, I did chemo three years ago and I still have neuropathy in my feet and I, you know, I can't shake it. It's not debilitating, but it's always there. I'm always aware of it. And, uh, yeah. So you might want to really have a, you know, drill down and have that discussion with the, uh, the oncologist because uh, this, is, this is a big, big issue. So make sure they're aware of everything like that. Don't just assume they're reading all your reports. I, I believe they are. That's why it's in the same hospital. And I was pretty impressed how they, they reviewed my, my records. Part of the frustration, if I can add one, is just the administrative of different hospitals and groups and this and that. And, and trying to, you know, be a, um, trying to be your own advocate, I think, as David mentioned and others that, uh, um, you know, just, just trying to get the information flow so that people are aware of what we're at. Yes. That's a, that, that was a, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for what was just said about the chemo and the relationship to that TN, I call it TN, because I've been struggling with that, although I, I will be going with the GU Boston recommendation uh, as apart from a local oncologist at this stage. So I'm, very strongly inclined um, to do the radiation. Yeah. No, I think the radiation is a good move. And and if you 
continue to use the local oncologist in Bar Harbor, Maine. Um, I share with him that uh, meta study that I sent you that just came out last week because that'll help fill him in quite a bit on what's going on. Do you, do you have any pain from the Mets showing up in your spine and your uh, and your ribs? None. I'm unfamiliar with what can happen. I've listened to some of you present, and there was a gentleman that talked about um, you know back pains and things of that nature. I don't, to my knowledge, I don't have any, Peter. Very good. Very good. Okay. Do you have any any particular questions or concerns? Uh, that our collective uh, experience might be able to help you with right now. But Not keep in mind, this, yeah, this is a manageable disease. Um, I mean, yes, you were diagnosed with advanced disease, um, came out of the blue, but it's already spread. But many of us have been dealing with this for years. I mean, myself, it's going on nine years now in a, in a few months, and uh, some much longer. And uh, and there are all kinds of ways to manage this. It's not going to be cured, but um, it, you, you've got a long way to go. Agreed. Uh, Jim Marshall, Rich, did you have something? Um, yes, Rich, Henry, how are you handling the, the side effects okay, of the ADT? I don't have any yet. I, I, I've read the list, and um, but to my knowledge, I don't have any. I mean, maybe I feel a tad. Well, I don't have any, to be honest with you. It's been the same. I'm a, I'm a CPA. I work part-time. Uh, I do tax returns kind of on a limited basis now. But on that note, I, um, to my knowledge, I don't, I don't have any. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll come later. It'll come later. Take, just take a couple of deep breaths as they, if, they, right. if the side effects start coming. I, do you exercise? At all, I'm sorry, yes. Jim. He, you he, said he, did, he said he he said he walked two miles a day with his lab. Oh, good show! Keep it up. Yeah, Thank keep you. it up, and once once the weather warms up, get out even more. You'll you'll do okay. We've got a foot yeah, coming yes. tonight. The only thing we'd add on the exercise front is try to incorporate a little resistance exercise too, because um, as you've probably read, um, you're going to lose the, the hormone therapy can lead to a loss of muscle mass. So um, don't just rely on the, uh, on the exercise. Incorporate a little bit of uh, of uh, resistance too. Thank you, uh, Rich. Okay. What about your pathology report? Have you gotten a second opinion on that? I'm not sure it would make much of a difference, but it seems kind of aggressive uh, picture you're presenting with for a Gleason 7. We'd expect a Gleason 8 or 9 maybe uh, with de novo metastatic disease to the bone. Uh, so just for the sake of having accurate information, knowing what you're up against, if you haven't already had a second opinion on the pathology report, it might be a good idea. Okay. And, and you want to do that through Dr. Epstein at Johns Hopkins. Just ask your uh, whoever did the biopsy to send the slides to Johns Hopkins, Dr. Epstein, and you'll get the results, a second opinion back in a couple of weeks. And it'll go on your insurance, no doubt. Okay. Dr. Epstein? Right, at Johns Hopkins. That's, that's he's, he's the world expert on second opinions. And he sees... You know, pathology is a is a it's not an exact science. It's a pathologist looking through a um a microscope. So you want to get expert eyes looking at this. He sees things often that nobody else sees. Yeah, I know they took thirteen cores, and I guess I had pro I had cancer in eleven of the samples. But I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, that your, your urologist should know the drill for this, but if you have any pushback, just tell them you want to have them sent to Johns Hopkins, uh, to Jonathan Epstein. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments for Rich? 
Um, no, but I, I just want to say for the newbies that if you are not aware, there is a chat window and um, it's the little square boxes next to the people icon at the top. So stuff is getting put in there and I'm just going to put Epstein's uh, link for you, Rich, right in there right now. And uh, just want, I just want want the new folks to be aware about the chat window thank you and and anyone who's new if we don't have your email so we can get you on our mailing list and for your the reminder notices every week please uh put your name and email in the chat window so that we can uh yep. put you on our mailing list as well yep. and we have rich already signed up Peter. okay okay um we're gonna move to uh, Dave Fitch. Okay, so you got the drill now, yeah, Dave? Hi. Okay, yes, so, so same um, thing. Um, where, where do you live, Dave? Silicon Valley. Excuse me, where? Silicon Valley, Los Altos. Silicon Valley, okay. Yeah. Hope you don't have any money in the bank there. <laughs> Not in Silicon Valley Bank. Okay, good. But it's, everybody uh, seems to be running for the banks right now. But um, right. And how old are you, Dave? This is my 80. 80. Okay. When were you first diagnosed? This started for me in, in 2015 at the local VA here. Um, I had a, a doctor that said that she thought that my PSA looked like it was going up a little bit. I didn't know what that was. And I should go see a urologist and I didn't know what that was either. Um, my PSA at the time was about three and a half. And it's never been, during the whole course of all my procedures, never been more than four. It's usually two and a half to three and a half. Um, so I went to see the urologist at the VA and uh, he, he, you know, he gave me about 20 minutes when I could use a lot more and said that there was something there, you know, and I, you know, DRE and so forth. That was about it. Um, I ended up with an MRI there. Um, when I went back to see him, he said that I needed to have a biopsy. And uh, in 2015, I don't think you do this anymore, but all that the VA was doing was blind biopsies. And I had done enough reading to know that I wanted something more than a blind biopsy. I wanted somebody that could use the MRI and guide it. And uh, they were good enough to send me over to Stanford. And uh, I, I got the, I got a biopsy there. I don't have all the numbers in front of me. It's been a while, but I had, I think it was about 17 or 18 cores. And uh, they, they were uh, Gleason's three, three plus four and four, four plus three. Um, and about uh, four of them, uh, two on one side and two on the other, were a little over 50% uh, uh, Gleason 4. So at, at that point, um, I, did, I started doing some research and I went back to see uh, this guy at the VA and I finally realized that urology at the VA was not the place that I wanted to be. Um, but I ended up looking for something that had minimal side effects. And I ended up uh, down at the University of Texas Medical Branch, uh, excuse me, uh, getting a, a uh, oh, I'm, I'm choking to death, excuse me. Um, an old, uh, a, uh, God, I'm losing my mind. Um, With the uh, focal laser ablation. Oh, really? And, and where and where did you do this? Where did you do it? Of, University of Texas Medical Branch okay. in Galveston, with Dr. Walser, who had done about a hundred of them at that point. Okay. Um, and as it turned out, I think as I look back, you know, this is like in retrospect, I was pushing the envelope with trying to do that because that's good if you just have one, you know, one problem. But I had three, and uh, I was still pushing for it. And he said he would do it, and that was 
that got him twenty thousand dollars in his bank account but that's that's what i did and this was all in the, the procedure was in 2016 and then um after that i had uh, mris and um i had a couple of bone scans along the way for a couple of years and it was everything was fine uh until uh an mri at uh stanford uh pointed out what they thought was a, a suspicious area they didn't call it a lesion they just said it looks suspicious and they didn't think i needed to do anything but i said well how about you know we should do a biopsy i didn't have any trouble with them and uh see what what comes back he said that was fine in the interim i had a i'm a big cyclist and i had a bicycle crash they caused some problems on my inside so we had to postpone that for about six months uh before i could get uh an mri that could that he could read and uh when it came back uh this is a urologist he, uh, he, uh jeffrey son is his name he said i can't believe it but you know you have high risk high volume cancer and i had gleason eights and nines uh some of i don't remember how many there were uh in the sample but they were all all had uh, one of them was a hundred percent uh and another one was they were between 50 and 100 percent i it, i was kind of a mess i was really worried and i realized that i really screwed up with the focal laser ablation i should never have done that but i had done that so i started on at that point this was in uh, uh 2019 in april um i went to uh, uh a local oncologist here at El Camino Hospital, who's got a pretty good reputation. His name is Dr. Dormandy, and he's actually he actually does a lot of work. I'm sorry. I know him. He, he well, yes, we know, we know him. Right. Okay. All right. There are a lot of guys here that use that use him and and Schultz both. Um, any rate, so I started with Dr. Dormandy, and after he uh, reviewed my what I had. He kind of took he, he took what he called the kitchen sink approach. He threw everything at me. He said, you're a high risk, high volume. You know, I think that what we ought to do is start you on ADT right away, brachytherapy, uh, VMA, uh, external beam. Uh, and when we're done with all that, we're going to have a, a round of chemo. I mean, my God, it was, you know, that was two years out of my life. It was it was a huge deal. But that's kind of what I did. I, I'm kind of I'm compressing a lot of stuff so I don't take any more time than I have to here. But um, I went through uh, permanent seeds with uh, Dr. Steve Kurtzman, um, and then uh, I had uh, uh, Calypso VMAT with uh, with his buddy. Uh, his name is Bob Sinha. That, th these are all at El Camino, and I had 29 sessions of that. Um, the, the, um, I had, a what the, oh, Axiomen, that was the name of the scan I had. Axiomen was the scans that were being done before PSMA and so forth. Right. And it showed, it showed a met on my uh, pelvis, a small one, but in the bone. And so, uh, as a part of the, uh, as a part of the radiation, uh, he radiated that area i think it was on two or three separate occasions uh out of the 29 sessions that i had um and this was um before uh i went on uh, chemo and so i went on you know i had taxes here i'm looking at my notes and i can't tell you how many sessions of taxes here i had but i think it was supposed to be six and i was only able to handle four a uh, five and Dormady took me off and he said, you're done. And uh, but I was still on ADT. I was still on Lupron. And I stayed on that that whole thing until. Uh, oh, uh, 2021 in August of 2021. And uh, I finally got him to let me take a holiday and go on active surveillance at that point. Uh, I mean, I. Uh, my legs, I'm a big bicycle guy, and I, I couldn't ride with my friends. So I, my legs are so weak. That was probably the biggest 
side effect that I had out of, out of all these procedures that I had was the fact, and they're still weak today, that I have, you know, weak legs. I've got to use an electric bike. Uh, but uh, it was, I, I was in pretty bad shape uh, just from all the procedures I've been through. I've got osteoporosis, so I'm still on, I'm on Prolia. That's the only drug that I'm still getting. I get an infusion every 60 days of, of that. Um, and after about uh, a year of being on active surveillance, I think it was there. Yes, it was. Uh, Normandy put me up, since my PSA and my testosterone were both negligible, I said, well, would it help if I had uh, Androgel? I'd been on Androgel some time ago at the, at the VA because I had osteoporosis severely, as a matter of fact. Um, and so he said, well, how about if we let's just, just give you one pack every day and, you know, it should get your, it may get your testosterone up into the lower part of the range uh, and we'll just monitor it and see how it is. So that's what we started doing. And that's, I've been off and on with that since that period of time. And my testosterone runs any place from 100 to about, a, uh, about 200, depending on when the, the sample is taken. Um, and I've had, a, I've had two PSMA scans and an MRI scan subsequently, and they're all clean. Um, so I'm, I'm just sitting here waiting for the next shoe to drop <laughs> uh, with, with, you know, another, my next problem, whenever that, whenever that comes about. Interesting. So I didn't catch it. Did, did they put you on a second line anti-androgen too? Were you on darolutamide or enzalutamide? Or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I was on Xtandi. I was on Xtandi. Xtandi. Okay. Yeah. And that, I was on, you know, when these things were just coming out, you know, they were kind of rolling them out one after the other. Right. And uh, I I ended up on Xtandi and they were talking about maybe I should change over and yada, yada, yada. And it was about then when I said, you know, I really would like to get off all this stuff. So that's kind of where that happened. Very interesting. So. I don't, I remember I recently asked my, one of my medical oncologists whether I should go on, on a testosterone and, and he wrote back absolutely no at this point. And I, I too have been off of ADT for a year and a half or, or so and uh, with, with low levels. Where, where's your, but, uh, where is your testosterone level now? Uh, really? It's about seven, it's been about 70 for the last four months. Anyway, but we're not talking about me here, but we're talking about you. I don't okay. know many many docs or guys that or docs that would put people on uh, testosterone replacement um, in your situation. Um, would you like? I mean, we'll talk like to some talk? people. We'll talk to some yeah. people later who do it as a as a trial. But it's very interesting. Anybody else have any comments here? I can. I can talk to you probably for an hour about this stuff. But the reason why, I mean, I've Snuffy Smith used it. Um, right. I, I know right. a lot of, you know, and it, and it was controversial, still a little controversial. But my my position is, as long as I'm getting tested, PSA and testosterone and so forth, uh, and I'm getting scans, um, that, and all this is doing is, I'm trying to get my testosterone off of zero and up to something where I feel a little better. Because if you're if you leave your testosterone at zero, you know you're opening yourself up for things like heart attacks and you know just you know feeling like shit too. But I, mean, I understand. Like, I know the feeling well. I know it well, <laughs> and all of us all of us on this call know it well. Yeah. But my my but my osteoporosis is what got me on Androgel even before I had uh, cancer. And to kind of put that in perspective. Uh, I was 5'11", about, you know, 10 years ago, and I'm now 5'4". And wow. that is all osteoporosis. Wow. So it's, it's a big problem. So do you have any questions for the group? Or, because people have had a wide range of experience in this group. There's some 40 of us on right now with you. Um, yeah, been I, through, I, been I, through I, the I, mill. I, I, I think for right now, 
um, I, I, I'm just wanting to introduce myself to you, you guys and, you know, listen in. And if I hear something that I make some sense, I'll ask a question or whatever it is. But I'm in a couple of support groups out here as well. Um, so, you know, I think it's all what you guys do is really great. I actually think you've got a little higher level of, of knowledge than my support groups do out here. Uh, so I'm hoping that maybe I'll glean something out of it. But, uh, you know, but I'm good. I'm fine. Yeah, I've, I've gone to the El Camino support group, which is online now, and I plug into it every, every once in a while. They all know me pretty well. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> They're good. Okay, They're good guys, but it's but it, you're right. We we do things at a different level here. Yes. I, I my name's John. I want to welcome you to the group. I hope you keep coming because I'm sure practically every one of us is fascinated by the idea of going on low dose testosterone. And I have a feeling we're going to see more of it because in recent meetings, um, we've heard uh, medical oncologists argue about this and the evidence doesn't really seem to be that high that it's going to flare everything up it seems counterintuitive because we work so hard to wipe out all our testosterone to save ourselves but uh it's very interesting and you've responded really nicely to everything that you've uh, done since that partial ablation you had a long time ago so uh it's a good story i hope you keep coming yeah well thank you you know, I, I I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand that I think I probably really screwed up with that focal laser ablation. I was, I didn't know too much about it. I knew I didn't like side effects. I was at the VA here in Palo Alto and uh, at the at their urology department. I didn't know what a urologist did. And I got treated really, really, really poorly, you know. And for a long time, I was so pissed off at him, I couldn't see straight. And now I want to go shake their hand because... They treated me so bad that I had to go do my own homework and I didn't realize what I was doing at the time. It right. worked out really great. All of us know people in your situation and you know, our, our mission is to head them off at the pass. I mean, <laughs> doctors that will do focal laser ablation or, or any kind of ablative therapy with a, with a Gleason 4 plus 3 and higher are, uh, shouldn't be doctors, is my, in my opinion. I know and bilateral disease. I know I know a few people that have gotten away with it with with a very low grade three plus four, but they've done it at a center of excellence like UCSF, and they ran them through a battery of tests where they were absolutely sure that it would work. They would not take a risk otherwise. So um, yeah. yeah, it was it was crazy doing it, and and a lot of people you know I've got friends that are dead because of that that they. Uh, did ablation at a four plus three. Hey, Dave, this is Julian, this is Julian Morales. I had the uh, FLA with Dr. Walzer when my PSA was 8.7, and it did drop it down uh, to almost 2.5, but then it came back with a vengeance, and I took another pass. Yeah. I mean, I, my, I, I don't remember what my PSA was, but it wasn't very high. You know, it was like three and a half, maybe. Uh, but it was the, it was the tumors, you know, that should have said, don't do this. But I, but I didn't know, you know, I just knew I wanted something that had no side effects. Doctor should know. That's, that's the crime. The doctor should know. Right. And Peter's right. And I, I just want to say, don't be, don't keep beating up on yourself because that's not going to help. Um, you are where you are. You handled it great. Now you have to come back. We do not um, recommend. Are you I, you may be aware, but we have a lot of different groups for different levels of people. So this is the advanced recurrent group, but we have we have a low intermediate group, and we are very very circumspect about focal anywhere, anybody doing focus. As Peter says, they really, really have to qualify for focus. And um, we've seen it too often, whether it's Julian or you, or, you know, we could probably go back, I could go back to my notes and find a dozen men with your story. And as Peter says, the doctors are at fault, not the patients. So Len, Len and Jim Marshall, Len, um, why don't you go first? 
Okay, so Dave, um, given your history of uh, osteoporosis and your bone metastasis, I th I think you should talk to your doctor about getting off of Prolia and taking um, okay, Denosumab, the higher dose, guys. Help me out here. Exgiva. Exgiva. Okay. Yeah, Exgiva. So uh, Exgiva you know is... I'm on, I'm... I'm sorry, I'm on it. I, I beg well, your pardon. Okay, I good. I was on Polio, it didn't work, and he put me on Exgiva. Okay, Just, so very I'm, good. I, I, my, my mistake, my bad, sorry. No problem, okay, good. Okay, Jim Marshall, go ahead. Uh, yes, Dave, I would like to then invite you to the ANCAN Veterans Group. We could use your expertise, especially uh using the va sign up for us please okay. when it yeah, when meets it, once, okay. it meets once once a month okay. it's me it's me it's me yeah the, the veterans group meets once a month and it's for all cancers men and women and it it uh it just taught, helps people navigate through the VA system, which, as you know, can be pretty darn complex, especially if you live in the hinterland someplace. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm pretty lucky. I'm only meet, about. I'm... The, group, the group meets um, on the fourth Thursday of the month. Um, Dave, I don't know if you're in our database, but if you're not, you, you should sign up to get reminders for this group. Join the veterans group. Joe Gallo was here earlier on. He had to leave. He leads that group. Um, we know a little bit about the Palo Alto VA. I, I personally know quite a bit more about the San Francisco VA, um, where I think the urology care is very good. Um, but we would love to have you come to that, uh, that, that veterans group. As, as Peter said, it's open to anybody. It's not about treatment. It's about Healthcare navigation for the vets. Okay. Okay. Well, if there's nobody else, we're gonna we're gonna keep moving on. We have one more new person we want to work with here, and that's Spencer. That's me. Here I am. Okay, Spencer. What's your last name? Field. F I E L D. Okay. And how old are you? Uh, I'm going to be eighty in June. Eighty. <laughs> Well, I'm okay. 79, but I'll be 80 in a few months. Okay. And and where do you live? Outside of Philadelphia. Okay. And tell us about yourself. When were you first diagnosed? Well, I was first diagnosed in last October, uh, but uh, I started getting uh, symptoms, uh, actually uh, just urinary uh, uh, blockage symptoms. You know, hard, but finding it harder to urinate. Uh, and that was around um, July. And uh, I was just going to my regular ur urologist. <clears throat> and he told me I, I probably would need uh, uh, surgery for it. Uh, you know, one of those TERP surgeries or, or whatever they're doing. <clears throat> and um, uh, it, 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 it got worse. Uh, it, it just progressively started getting worse to the point where I couldn't urinate at all. And um, at one point I had to go to the emergency room to get a catheter to drain my, to, to get drained. Uh, I went back to my urologist and um, he scheduled me for a um, aquablation surgery uh, to, uh, to, to widen my, uh, uh, you know, the urinary tract uh, or through your where the urethra goes through, and uh, uh, at the meanwhile he uh, the skirt the the surgery wasn't scheduled for like another uh, six months uh, after uh, or so, I'm sorry six weeks after um, uh, the, the, this visit, and he he taught me how to self catheterize, which I was doing for a while, uh, and then at at one point the self catheter stopped working. I, I I just couldn't I, I couldn't get it through, uh, and uh, he put me on a permanent poly, a Foley catheter, and uh, the day of the surgery, 
uh, he did. He, he started doing the surgery, and he couldn't do it because my prostate was so misshapen that he couldn't figure out how to where to cut and stuff like that. So at that point, he took a biopsy, uh, as just as uh, while he was in there for, for, for trying to do the surgery, and that's what what uh, turned out positive for for prostate cancer. But up until then, he didn't think I had cancer at all. He just thought I, I just had a a uh, and enlarged prostate. Uh, the uh, the uh, it, it, it wasn't the full um, biopsy where where they do you know the twelve or fourteen samples. It was just the biopsy as a result of the uh, as, as tissue scraping um, uh, during the surgery. Right. Uh, that turned out um, to be um, a Gleason score of five plus five of the ten. Uh, and uh, at that point, I figured, and he, he recommended an oncologist, and I figured I, I got to get away from this guy. I, so uh, uh, I, uh, he, he, uh, he had also recommended a, uh, uh, a, uh, another urologist who, is, who is, has more uh, experience in this type of surgery. But I was, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I, 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 I decided I, I chose somebody for, from Jefferson Hospital in Philadelphia. Uh, I have a, a, a cousin who is uh, uh, he's chief of trauma surgery there, and I figured he'd. I know Jefferson is a, is a pretty good cancer hospital, uh, so so I, so I I, uh, I made an appointment with <clears throat> with the, first I made an appointment with the. Uh, uh, with the with the urologist at, at at Jefferson, and he referred me to an, onco an oncologist. And and the first thing the oncologist oh I, no, oh and, and um, I I had a um, a PET scan with the uh, what is that called the PS PSMA PET scan yes. you had yeah I had a PSMA okay. PET scan, and um, that showed um, uh, uh, a lot of malignancy in the in the in the prostate. The prostate was very enlarged, uh, and it showed a suspicious spot on the uh, obturator muscle, um, and you know by the hip. Uh, and and there were a couple of other uh, spots, but there were that, that they didn't think was anything. Anyway. Okay. So to... so so have you? So where are you at this point? Have you done surgery or? No, I haven't done surgery. Uh, I had and what, a, what are they rec what are they recommending that you do? Well, uh, right now, well, I'm on uh, anti-androgen therapy now. Uh, I was getting to that. Uh, 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 well, the oncologist uh, wanted me to to um, to get a uh, an MRI on top of the and, and the and when I got the MRI, the MRI showed a lot more than the than the PET scan showed, which is unusual. Uh, and that showed uh, involvement of the lymph nodes, uh, the um, the spot on the obturator muscle, and uh, and another spot on my iliac uh, bone. Uh, right. So uh, here, when, when, during that first visit, before he did the MRI, uh, he 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 said he said, "I think where we're going is uh, uh, just uh, um, radiation." Uh, okay. But then, so, uh, and, and he also wanted to get a, a more more complete biopsy. Uh, so, so hang on, hang on a second here, Spence. So you've got a a pretty difficult case, and I mean, I, I sympathize with you because I was on a catheter for eight months. I closed mm, up the, mm, before the night of my biopsy, not to pee again for eight months. I was on Foley and self catheterization, and mm, uh, and it required. A prostatectomy for me, but I was a lot younger. I was in my 60s, and yeah. I could do that, and that got rid of the tumor that was blocking my my urethra, mm -hmm. and I was able to urinate and I was continent. But you're you're 80 years old, and it's right. it's very rare that a doctor would would um, try Robert, to do a prostatectomy yeah. on an 80 year old right. gentleman. Right. Um, so you're in a you're in a little bit of a bind here. Well, I, uh, one thing I do uh, that, that has helped me a lot is uh, I, I now have a um, um, supra pubic 
Uh, right. Catheter, which yeah, is I had one of those. I had one of those too for a while. A lot yes. more comfortable than what I had. I was the the, the catheter up the urethra was driving me crazy. It was very right. very painful. Right. But this uh, this I've been living with. Uh, actually, I've been living with it for several months now. And, okay, uh, well, that's that's good. Yeah. So. How how expert and and how much faith do you have in your doctor at Jefferson, the oncologist? A lot, I think, according to my okay. well. And, and and what is his name? His name is William Tester, T E S T E R. Okay, well at least you're in Philadelphia and you've got you can get good care there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, well, this is a this is a tough situation. Yeah. At, your, at your age, because a lot of doctors are very afraid to to go too far with this. Um, well, he may it's be. Doubtful, it's doubtful that radi radiation might help with some of the meds, but I'm I'm not sure you're going to get relief. Well, from the, one, uh, once once he once he did the once he did the MRI, he abandoned the radiation for the time being. Uh, okay. And and what he's uh, he put me on an uh, anti-androgen uh, therapy, so I'm Just on. Uh, so I, I so I, uh, I, I got the uh, uh, lupr lupralide injection, and uh, uh, and I and that was uh, that was about three months ago, and I'm taking uh, abiraterone every day. Okay, Zytiga. And, uh, okay. Yeah, Zytiga. And, um, and, I, and I go back this coming Friday for my second uh, uh, lupralide injection. Okay. Uh, it it's the doctor is your doctor tester is he a urologist or is he a he's medical an oncologist. oncologist he's an oncologist so and, he's and a medical his, oncologist. yeah he's a clinical oncologist and his practice specializes in prostate okay okay is a, where is, is he located of, in philadelphia in jefferson of, in philly jefferson jefferson, jefferson. Hello. Anybody else have any yeah. comments? Len, anybody else want to weigh in on this? It's a very, it's a challenging situation. Yes. From my standpoint. Yeah. Well, how he, about you? For yeah. So. Well, just one other thing. He, uh, at one point, he considered adding chemo uh, to the mix, uh, but then he decided not to because he didn't think I was strong enough to handle it. We can understand. I can understand that too. If you're if you're okay with the supra, uh, urinating, yeah, yeah, the, ur yeah. the supra catheter, yeah, um, that's a good sign. I mean, if you can live with that, then might you know you you might be able to treat the cancer with eventually with radiation. See see how the um, how the ADT and and uh, and stuff works yeah but um it's it's i don't know where they're going to go with it what what is your what's happened to your psa and your testosterone over the last month i'm sorry you're breaking up I, I'm hard, it's, hard, it's hard for me to hear you what is your psa okay originally the, the, the psa uh, when i before i started the treatment was was 22. uh but uh, i just i just got the blood tests uh, yesterday, um, for uh, the upcoming visit on Friday to to uh, Dr. Tester, and the, my PSA has gone down to two and a half. Yeah, which I think is a good thing, I guess. Yes. Yes. How are you doing on the uh, ADT? Do you have any energy at all, or is it? Uh, yeah, my, well, yeah, my energy level is definitely less. Uh, I'm getting flashes, you know, like I got sweats, but other, other than that, nothing much. Uh, I am kind of uncomfortable. I've been uncomfortable with um, uh, just sitting down because the, uh, I guess the prostate was pushing up against the rectum and uh, that was causing pain when I sit. Um, that seems to uh, have abated somewhat, although uh, I was just in Mexico for a month, by the way. I just got back from Mexico a week ago, uh, and uh, dur and during uh, and at, in Mexico, uh, I had a fall uh, playing golf, and uh, I was in a uh, well, whatever. I was in a sand trap, and I was, fell trying to get out of the sand trap, uh, and 
I, okay. um, so that's, that's, that, that's, so I have, so I've had some pain from that, but, uh, okay. well, you want to stay, you want to stay active in some way, I'm trying uh, to. whether it's walking inside, whatever you got to do while yeah. you're on ADT, you got to stay active, particularly mm -hmm. your age and under the treatment you're on. Len, do you have something? Uh, yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh, Spencer, how is your cardiovascular health? Pretty good. I do have a pacemaker. Uh, I had um, uh, AFib, uh, which was, uh, I guess it was about a year and a half ago. Uh, my Apple Watch went off <laughs> and, and said you're an AFib. I didn't have any physical symptoms at all, uh, but I... Uh, uh, I, I went to the emergency room. Uh, I told them I had I had AFib. They, you know, they, they, they uh, no physical symptoms. They took they they did an EKG and yep, you're an AFib. Uh, so I, my cardiologist had me well put me on a, a blood thinner on Eliquis, and I'd been on Eliquis for quite a while. The AFib uh, would would go away. Then it would, you know uh, then I'd have a. Uh, and uh, maybe every couple of months, I'd I, I have some AFib. And I, again, I only knew about it because of my Apple Watch. Um, and um, eventually, uh, my cardiologist decided to put me on a heart monitor for a week. And uh, he found out that it was unusual because most people with AFib get high, get high heart rates. Uh, my, I was getting low heart rates. And, uh, and and it was low enough that during the night it was, it was alarming. It had some some nights it, it dropped below 30 beats, beats per minute. Uh, so he decided I, the best the best thing to do is to put me on a uh, pacemaker. So I have the pacemaker. So, um, okay. so you you might want to talk to your oncologist about about the Zytiga, the abiraterone, whether uh, whether that's the best thing for you to be on with the heart situation you have because it tends to raise blood pressure for some guys and it's 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 not always heart friendly and there are other drugs that might have a lower profile for for the heart and be just as effective but have a have a talk with him make sure he's he's on board with with what's going on with your heart because okay. that could that could be a worse situation than the prostate cancer at mm. this point yeah well he is aware of the uh that i'm on a pacemaker and he's aware of the uh the AFib. Uh, okay, but, but I, make, will, I, yeah. I will bring it up with him uh, one Friday. Yeah, because Zytiga sure. has a has a uh, has a reputation for messing with hearts. It did with mine. Mm -hmm. But uh, but again, I had no physical symptoms. Uh, my heart f seems fine. Uh, okay. The uh, I, I haven't had any uh, warnings from my Apple Watch since since I had the pacemaker installed. That was yeah. that was around um, last August. Uh, and, and and fortunately, the pacemaker I have is one of the newer models that you, that you can still get a, a MRI with. The older models, you couldn't get an MRI if you had a pacemaker. Okay. Well, it's amazing this disease waited until you were 80 years old or 79 I know. before it I know. kicked yeah. in. Yeah. But yeah, and you now haven't had to live with it too long. So anybody else have any comments for for Spencer or any questions? Yeah. The only thing, uh, the only thing I have to to mention is if Spencer, if you're not signed up, and Dave Fitch, if you're not signed up already and getting the reminders, please send us the, the reminder. You can send it by personal message, your email, mm -hmm. and we'll make sure that you you go in and to the database and you get a reminder. I know that Rich is already signed up. I think I am. I got a reminder. That's how I found out that you had something. Else. Okay. Then you're signed up. If you got a reminder, you're signed up. Okay. Okay. Well, we've got several other guys in the Philly area that are often on our calls. So. Yeah. Um, well, Joe Joe Gallo was the guy that first. Told oh, me Joe Joe connected you. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he's up in Bucks County. Right. Good. That's where I am in Bucks County. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us, Spencer. And you know, my heart goes out to you. I know I know those symptoms well because that's how I was diagnosed. Mm. You know. Un unable to urinate for eight months, and it was a drag. Oh, yeah. it's, it was awful, really. Yes, I went crawling to the emergency room uh, for that one. Yeah. Mm. Okay, well, we're going to move on because there's a number of guys who are regular here who want to 
update. And I'm going to uh, start with Ken Anderson. Go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry, my um, computer internet's not wide enough bandwidth to turn on my um, video, but um, I can tell you kind of what's going on. A couple of things, though. We, we got some bad news yesterday from Mindy um, McGuire. Dennis passed away yesterday, the day before yesterday, actually. So on Sunday afternoon oh around 4 o'clock. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he ended up going in first thing in the morning on Sunday. He just didn't feel right, and by four o'clock they found a, bit, a brain aneurysm, and there wasn't anything they could do. Oh no! So, yeah. well, sad Dennis, news. Yes, it's terrible. Den, Den, Dennis was with us for I don't know how many years, but fighting really hard. I mean, a young guy, brave soul. It's, it's very sad. Yeah, he had pretty good success with Povicto, but it messed up his blood counts. He had talked i'd chatted with him i think like on the 17th or 18th and he said he wasn't feeling very well and um he didn't really want to do another round of chemo so he had set up with antanarakis to take an injection so he actually took the injection on the 7th so almost a week prior to him departure but you know the aneurysm had, it was just a weak blood vessel in his brain, so it didn't have anything to do with a testosterone shot. At least that was what was stated by Antanarakis. So, which I was, you know, sad news. Yes, know. it is. Yeah, he reached out to many of us just the other day, last week, and some of us corresponded with him. He was just kind of like, what What do I do next? What, you know, things are things are not looking good right now. And, uh, and some of us reached out to him, but um, it, it was it didn't look good it, last week for sure. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, they haven't they haven't set any services, times, or dates. It's probably going to be in the spring or early summer. Had two two kids, Corbin and Cameron. Both were around, so he'd actually passed away in the hospital because they thought for a while that maybe they could do surgery, but you know, by four o'clock you passed. It was just too late before they could get anything in place. Well, we're all sorry for sure. Thanks for letting us know, Kim. Sure. So, so tell us how you tell us how you're doing. Um, well, I you, finished... you heard earlier, we've got somebody who's actually doing Andrew uh, doing testosterone <laughs> shots, but you're doing it for right, a different right, reason. Right. Well, it's definitely. <laughs> You know, bat is an interesting thing. You know, they throw a bunch of testosterone at you for three weeks, and then they let your T level crash. So, you know, the first week, the first month was not too bad. The second month for me, I ended up getting really intense leg cramps and muscle spasms. Um, primarily that period occurred in the fourth week, right, when your testosterone goes from like 450 down to seven there's a big drop in t levels and they're trying to reset the androgen receptor well anyway i've completed three cycles during the entire period my psa has been going up you know dan Mead and antanarakis both state that it could be because the cells are dying and you know they said well, they want me to do all four cycles my next cycle which will be the fourth is coming up on the 28th. And then I'll start darolutamide. Um, PSA has gone up pretty, pr quite a bit the last, uh, I don't know, three months, four months. It's gone from uh, 55 to 1500. So, um, but surprisingly, the PET scan showed a little bit of uptake, you know, a little bit of more activity in the bones. No soft tissues, no lymph nodes. My Alkfoss is still at like 65. Um, so I don't think it's cancer. It didn't show up on the PET scan as being that much more aggressive than it was four months ago. So definitely had more meds, but not enough to go from like 50 or 70 to 1500. 
So I don't know, I'm going to do the four cycles. I'll have more to report once I start Darrow, beginning of uh, May. Well, you're amazing, Ken. That's, that's all I can say. You're amazing. Uh, Ken, this is Len Sierra. Uh, so are you going to go on darolutamide while you're still on BAT therapy, or is that after BAT is finished? No, the cycle, it's four cycles, four weeks apart. You take a shot of Lupron and a shot of testosterone, 400 milligrams. You do that every four weeks. The four shot, you know, the normal shot of, of testosterone and Lupron, and then that all dissipates during that four-week period, then you go on to darolutamide. So there's no overlap. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So uh, darolutamide would be monotherapy? Monotherapy darolutamide? That I probably I don't have the answer. I probably probably will not be monotherapy, but I don't know. It's up I haven't actually posed that question to Paul yet. So don't know. Hopefully yes, monotherapy, but I quite honestly think it'll probably be both. But I d I don't know. You know, my testosterone right now, I'm in the third week of my third cycle. My T level's probably like four hundred. I must tell you, it makes you feel great after seven years of no testosterone. Uh, it does come with a cost because you, you do get you know, muscular cramps, and they usually show up about bedtime, and it's just about impossible to get rid of them. Wow. Anybody have any questions for Ken? Could I, yeah. Could I ask? Uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ken, uh, all right, you go, go ahead, please. Oops. Well, I was just going to ask Ken about the testosterone. Uh, this is Dave. I've, I've been on uh, a testosterone pack. I've been on a pump, uh, you know, the gel, and I've also been on the shots. I kind of, I've, over the years, I've been on everything. And what I found was that when I, the first thing I had was the shots that it did kind of what it's done to you and that it runs the testosterone way up in a hurry uh and then it subsides i think that i found the one that was the most level testosterone was the gel that i used on my arms and depending on how many packs i was using at the time uh i could still run the testosterone up kind of high but i didn't have to i could i could monitor it with the gel and you know through you know yeah. Dave, but this is Dave. Ken's on a special trial called BAT for advanced disease, which is uh, um, uh, which doesn't have that option, I don't believe. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ken, when do they usually, or somebody, when is the point at which they usually suggest BAT? Like, what do they base it on PSA? Uh, and castrate resistance. When do they? When does that come up as the uh, an option? Well, I can honestly tell you, I would imagine eighty percent of the oncologists won't bring it up because it's not standard of care. Um, it's just not standard of care. So you have to actually know that it's a possibility. It's been around, as Rick said, a long time. I mean. For me, you know, I've gone through all the treatments. I'm just trying to see whether or not this one will buy me a little bit of time, you know, for four months. And I must admit, it's been pretty painful, you know, at times. It, it's like takes you right to the edge. Um, but um, they probably won't recommend that out just right out to the shoot. There's no, like, ideal time, per se, to do that. I guess when you run out of other options, that's one ideal time to do it. Um, so your PSA was around 50 when you started, it was growing up rapidly, it was really climbing, and I had to do something else. I couldn't continue yeah. doing, I couldn't continue doing chemotherapy, I right? Tried I the victim. Yeah, so yeah, well, Ken, we're keep us and keep us abreast of what's going on because this is. You're in a delicate place here. Uh, you don't really have 
too much, you know, too much else going on. So we want to, we want to no, know. There's, there's, Stay close there's clinical, clinical trials, you know, Paul said there's a bunch of stuff that that's out there. So I'm not, I'm not freaking out about it. You know, my PSA, if my Alkfoss was going through the roof, like my PSA was going through the roof, then I would. When I only have bone disease. So the fact that my Alkfoss is still in the 60s, the mid 60s, I have a lot of bone activity going on. So if it was going up and the PSA was going up, I probably would have jumped off the bat treatment. You know, I probably would have said, hey, there's too much bone activity. But I haven't really seen or felt bone pain. You know, you would think at a 1500 PSA, the pets that I do have would actually have some bone pain with them, but they don't. Hmm. So I don't know where I'm going, but I'm, this is just one of the little games I'm playing at the moment. Yeah, there's a number of us who don't know where we're going. God, I feel for you. Okay. Well, keep keep us in the loop on this one because it's moving fast here. Okay. Uh, Mike Yancey, you had an update. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna hold my internet connection is good enough for y'all to hear me. It's not late next week, but uh, we'll try to give y'all a quick update, kind of bring you go back in time a bit. Uh, I'm considered respiratory and it's on the loss of the, of the PT and also got mutation RB1 and TB53 stage. And of course, uh, I decided to move from Lupron to X, the oral drug, of course, in November. And as you remember, I found an issue with the kind of PGP inhibitors, i.e. PGI uh, inhibitors. Uh, basically, your metabolism of the Orgavox is slow and it can be used to increase your body big joint muscle pain, et cetera. And of course, at that point in time, didn't know exactly, uh, it really wasn't published anywhere. So we stopped, we stopped heartburn drug and got better. But I had a lot going on to sign at the time. So I couldn't really confirm what was being, what was the symptoms were, whether they're being caused by Orgovic or something else. So on November 15th, I had my fourth Levicto treatment. Levicto for me seemed to be working really, really well. Uh, I say that with one exception that, uh, you know, I did discover, uh, some spine leads that did not put in the PSMA. And so we used radiation on those, but otherwise the Povector or PSMA producing cancer seemed to be working excellent. I'd also been on Aberron since April, but it was doing absolutely nothing. So also the 15th, we stopped that. And then me being willing to try anything, I, oncologist willing to work with me I think I decided rather than going back to the front shot at that moment in time 15 I decided to see what would happen with my testosterone and PSA if I just stopped over it's all ADT stop now I don't think it had anything to do with stopping ADT but 11 days later I had severe right shoulder right hip pain and ended up in the hospital and uh five days of radiation to both and the shoulder seemed to to resolve two days after the last radiation, pain shoulder return with a vengeance. And at that point, I, w I basically was headed for my snow, my snowbird kind of rental. And uh, about you know, days late to check in, checked in on a Friday after a year today. And on Tuesday of that week, ended up in PR in Pensacola, Florida, and for a new lesion on my neck vertebrae. Wednesday, the next day, I called the oncologist and he asked me to be there Thursday. I said, that doesn't happen, but we can be there Friday morning. So that's what we did. So I got additional scan and it confirmed the lesion in the neck, but also additional lesions in my spine. And these are, are non PSMA producing lesions, if you will. So basically, Provicto was not going to touch those. So the decision was that we're going to need to stop Provicto and start what I refer to as carpet bombing using a carboplatin. Uh, as a result of a proteomic support that I had just got back from a, from the lesion on my spine, about finally replaced in November of 2022. So, followed this, you know, four days after my last chemo infusion, we had five days of radiation, all neck lesions. So, we got hit with a double wham, probably for some of the days. 
during February with my chemo too, uh, we did labs and showed the testosterone had gone from to eight and uh, kind of prepared for the bit, but the PSA had actually once declined again from 0.17 to 0.14. So I wanted to wait a little bit longer and see what PSA testosterone really do if the testosterone started to go up significantly. So, so, so Mike, where are you now? What, what, what is your concern right now? Well, that's where I'm at. So this lab testosterone shot up to 128, and PSA basically tripled from 0.14 Three seven. So we started Orcs again. Uh, started at March six, and uh, we'll get another test in April. But in March six, we also did a body scan, CT, and PSMA PET, and I did have some UV increases in several areas based on PSMA PET, which of course is basically my pelvis, my hip, all the places that uh, historically had significant cancer, some some of my shoulders uh, that did put out PSMA. Uh, of course, the lesions that, that on my spine do not put up PSMA, nor do they put up PSMA, or excuse me, PSA. They don't put up PSA. Well, what, then, what are your concerns? How can we help you, and what are your concerns right now? There's really no concerns. Right now, I'm bringing up to date the fact that I think we're fine, and then we'll have a meeting with the oncologist this Thursday. I think we're, we're, we're fighting two different types of, of cancer cells. Well, they're all prostate. We're fighting two different right. kinds, and the issue is going to be that, that you know, what are options going to be because in some cases you try to use two things at once it'd probably hasten my death uh because before my body could handle and so that's kind of where we're at just want to bring you all up to date so thank you yeah it's it's tricky because the psma scans don't show everything and yeah you've got a double scan all the time yeah you're fighting on two fronts here interesting yeah yeah so anybody anyway, have a comment anybody have a comment for mike I don't know if we have anybody else quite in that situation. Right Probably now. not. What, yeah. what what treat doing, Mike? I'm not sure that we're we're clear on on where you are in your treatment course. Are, are you doing uh -huh. your topicide or platinum or where yeah. are you and how much you've done? Yeah, I'm I'm finishing as of tomorrow. I'll finish uh, the third infusion sequence of of topicide and carboplatin. That seems to be working pretty well specifically on the spine lesions. What, we, what we're not clear of is, is how well it's working uh, with the lesions in the bones and hips. But knowing full well I was off ADT, testosterone went up. But now that I'm back on testosterone, maybe it's a better job with that too. We don't know yet. So when you say now you're back on testosterone, are you... In other words, you're you're not taking the Orgovix right now. No, I start I started that March I started that uh, March six. So I've been on it approximately what ten, not quite ten days yet. Okay, so so you are back. So you're back on you're back on the Orgovix, Correct. and you're doing this, this chemo, and your PSA is at one twenty eight. Correct. No, my PS no my my testosterone was at one twenty eight March six. My PSA has jumped to 0.37. So your PSA, your PSA is at 0.37. And how has that responded since you started the the uh, three cycles of testosterone? Where was it before you started? Before I started the before I started the uh, chemo, uh, it, hit, it was around 0.18. It then dropped to 0.17, and then the low point was 0.14, which was in first part of February. Okay. Got it. So, in other words, do, do you feel that these four cycles are working for you? This this this, this carbo plus etoposide, or not that you've done three, you have one more to do, but do you feel that that treatment is working for you? I feel like that treatment is working quite well. The question that we haven't answered at this point is since I have had some HV increase on the bone mass and the fact that they're not on ED, could that have an impact causing the chemo not to work very well with those particular lesions? And now that I'm back on it, can we keep those lesions uh, minimal, just like we're keeping the spine lesions minimal? Right. But the only way we're going to know that is not so much from the PSA, but it's 
but it's from doing scans. So they just have to be monitored regularly through bone scan, through through the uh, uh, CT scans and through the PSMA scans, recognizing that not everything's going to show up on the same scan. Right, correct. And that's the that's the plan currently. Yes, we're actually looking at doing if the etoposide carbofat continue to work, we feel like it's working. We're actually going to do a total of seven sessions. Okay. Okay, Mike, we're going to move on. I mean, like others tonight, you've got a pretty complicated situation too, and I'm glad you're I'm glad you're managing and keeping abreast of it and have a good understanding of what's going on. I mean, it's uh you you're doing a good job. You seem you seem to have an under good understanding of what's being called for. Thanks, Peter. Okay. Uh Les What's going on? You've got a complicated situation too. What's going on in your world? Well, what I would like to uh, have right now is if there would be somebody that would volunteer to speak Dr. E's to, con to uh, convert the language for me. Uh, I had a uh, port put in uh, several days ago and they told me a bunch of stuff that could happen. And I had problems immediately after I got home and I uh, had went back for x-ray today and they got the, some uh, response through the portal and describing some things but there are so many words in there that I don't understand and you know you look them up and but if you put all the things together it sounds pretty bad I I think if somebody really understood uh, the the language, they could interpret it and tell me it's not nearly as bad as it sounds. It sounds like they had punctured a lung. This is a chemo port they put in. Uh, that's one of those ports for the chemo. Yeah. Okay. I've got one yeah. as well. Yeah. But somehow well, something got messed up with it. Apparently they had nicked. Uh, knocked a hole in uh, one of the lungs. That's that's oh, the way no. it appears. But uh, uh, again, in, in in reading that stuff, I think it's uh, you put all those words together, and it's a lot worse than it really is. But if there's somebody on here that can interpret uh, Doctor E's, that I could send the the portal message to that could interpret it for me. Anybody willing to do that for for less? Help help them figure out what is the surgery report says for the installation of the port. Maybe we should uh, send that info to one of our MDs. You know, we have three of them, right? We have Mark Perlo, we have Jack, we have uh, John Antonucci. Yeah, could do that. And they're not here right now, but right. Yeah, I don't want to speak. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's let's start off start off by emailing the stuff to me, and I'll try to get okay. it to somebody. Okay. Okay. You, all right. Thanks, you've got, Peter. You've got all my contacts. Um, yeah. Start start off by emailing it to me. I'll take a look at it, and if I need help, uh, I will move it on to somebody who can explain what's going on. Okay. Okay. Terrific. I do have an appointment with the doctor, but I'd like to have a little bit better understanding what it is before going to see him. Okay. Thank you. I'll take a look at it this evening. Okay. I've got another meeting right after this, but okay. 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 So everybody understands we're not talking about Dr. E down in Houston. We're talking about uh, Dr. E's, um, you know, people who speak in uh, doctor talk. That's what Dr. E's is, me is meant by. Okay. Don't get confused. Medical ease is a better term. Okay. Yes. Okay. We've all been there. Okay. Les, I'll be looking for it and I'll get back to you later on tonight or first thing in the morning for sure. Okay. On the subject of medical talk and medical ease, um, Dr. Merchant at Bayer has committed to 
do a presentation towards the end of the year on um, simplifying medical language. And we don't exactly know when, and we're hoping either Len or, or, or David Muslin or one of the other guys that's worked with Dr. Merchant at Bayer will also participate in that. And, we, and she's also looking for someone else to bring in, but we are aware that um, it's sometimes hard to understand what these docs are talking about, and we have to try and address it. Very good. Okay. Uh, Herb, you said you've got some news you want to report quickly. Is your mic on? Yeah, we can't hear you, Herb. There you go. Here, how's that? Beautiful. Great. So things are not going in the right direction. I had a PSMA PET scan last Thursday, uh, and I thought it would show how nicely the Pluvicto worked. But instead, it picked up soft tissue lesions, a PSMA positive spot in the lung, and something negative in the liver and so we don't know what they are and tomorrow morning i'm having a liver biopsy but in addition i have enormous levels of cortisol it seems like i have cushing's disease or something like it that acth is through the roof cortisol's through the roof so we don't know what that's coming from we don't know if that's a separate tumor or this is neuroendocrine differentiation, which it could be, which scares the shit out of me. So, so tomorrow I'm going to be an inpatient at NIH while they work up the endocrine for a while. But all this just showed up after my back surgery, right? And now that also is co confounding and with the re rehab and everything. So I'm very weak. So it's all adding up to not so great. Stop. Stop. It's all adding up to not such a great situation. Four different things happening. Not to mention that from the Pluvicto, I have no taste. So that went away. And I'm just sort of, you know, not a happy camper at the moment. And I don't know, Herb, what, you know. Herb, full disclosure, I think we have to tell everybody that, that at the time of your back surgery, and when was that? Six weeks ago? Seven. Seven weeks ago. They removed a sample of cancer from your spine, and it was shown to... Dr. Epstein, and Dr. Epstein said he didn't see any neuroendocrine small cell disease. And we know that with prostate cancer, there's plenty of, uh, there are papers out there that, that distant lesions tend to be homologous. They're very similar in profile wherever they are in the body, although everybody's heterogeneous. Some, one man's disease is different from the next man's, but within the same body, those distant lesions are homologous. So, and at the time that you were in the hospital, you had these high ACTH levels, so something was already going on. And right. you, you fixated on this neuroendocrine, but I think that there's really good reason to say we can dispose of that issue. I mean, it's more likely to be something that isn't right in the pituitary, and this endocrine workup is going is, is going to come to that. Could it be a, a tumor? It could. But remember that all of you guys who are on hormone therapy, where if you are um, certainly if you're on an agonist, it's sending messages to the pituitary all the time. So it keep, that pituitary is switched on, and in some men, it it can result in issues. So. 
I, I think that we that that it's fair to say that 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 the neuroendocrine, whilst it's a possibility, it, it's pretty remote based on what we saw seven weeks ago. It doesn't go from zero right, to I, sixty to seven weeks. I hear you, Rick, but I'm worried about those soft tissue lesions. I get it. Okay, but let, let's talk about the soft tissue lesions. So we're going to biopsy one of them tomorrow. And when are we going to biopsy the lung? Pretty soon. They have to, that had to be done under CAT scan. It couldn't just, they need special, they need to set it up specially. Okay, but we need an appointment. I mean, it's urgent that we get the, the results right. of these two biopsies because we know that there are things going on. And from those two biopsies, we can see if you have precision medicine. And I right. know that Carducci ordered that biopsy for your lung last Thursday, Friday. He told you right. last Friday. And it's right, and I got the message. I got the message that it's going to be done. But when, but when? I'm not sure. Okay, so but the problem, think, my problem is I have this inpatient stay at NIH that interrupts it all. Right. Well, so I, is it possible to get this done at the same time when you're inpatient? No. Can it be done? The age cannot be done. Okay. Different hospital, different procedure. I mean, the endocrinologist who's treating me is, as you know, I have faith in her, and she says I could die from this. This untreated, the cortisol levels are through the roof in my latest scan, in my latest results. Okay. And so is So she says I could die from this. That's scary. Yes. Well, I know we they agree. Have we agree. This is not that. good news. They had treatment for that, Herb. Uh, like John Kennedy had uh, Cushing syndrome. For sure. I mean, but we don't, the problem is we don't know where it's coming from, Lynn. I mean, is this a separate tumor? Is this trans differentiation of a net? We don't know. That's what they're going to try to figure. That's what they're going to figure out. Okay. But I'm scared. I have to tell you guys. You know, I know you think that I'm always in a dark place, but. No, you're not. You're not, and we feel for you. This is not you're an human. easy journey for any of us. But you particularly have gone through the, gone through the mill in the last year for a number of ways, and we feel for you. Herb, whatever personality you have towards a dark place, there's no question this is this is a really dark place. <laughs> so I mean, I wouldn't deal. It's just dealing with too many things at once. Yeah. Get you. So we'll know the bi biopsies tomorrow morning. <laughs> then we'll deal with endocrine. Then we'll deal with the other one. And Carducci is talking about chemo. He's talking about, you know. Um, Taxol and cisplatin. Or, no, Len, you're shaking your head. Yeah, you you didn't no. handle chemo the first time around, and now you're much weaker. I that sounds like a really bad That's right. idea. But what else could we do, Len? What other way is? What other way out is there? Well, well first Problem. we need a diagnosis. That's right. I mean, I mean we've got to have a diagnosis. I mean, I will tell you. Carducci uh, jumped right in before he knew anything, saying, "This is what I think we should do: cisplatin and, and taxane." And I, I find that a little strange because he hasn't seen the results. We've got, we, we know we've got to get the results back. I mean, to me, it should be, well, let's see what these results, and then we'll come up with the right treatment. We just don't know until we have the results right. back. That's what I agree with, but. You know, there's not much left. There's plenty left. You've been listening to guys on this call for the last hour and a half. Ken Anderson, God bless him, and, and other guys. Right. And, and loads are left for them. But you've got to take the good out of this, and you've got to see the positive out of this, 
and say, if the same thing could work for me. There's plenty left. Okay. Let's just see what the results of the test show, and we have to move ahead. Yeah, but keep keep in touch with us. I know you will. Uh, you know, don't wait till next Monday. I'm really uh, kind of like, yes, thanks, Peter. All right. Uh, Herb, do you have like a clonazepam or something just to calm yourself? Oh yeah, down? now I'm on I'm on an antidepressant now. Yeah, I was right. thinking, of, which I think is good at this point because I, I finally got I got convinced that I needed it. Doesn't help. Right. Good. Of course, it, it happens to all of us when we get to that place. Yeah, or before that, I've been on it from the get-go. Yeah, this is this is this is all, this is screw around with your head and emotions big time. This I mean, but Len, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I, I'd wait till they do the the biopsy and and if they work up that uh, cortisol issue before you embark on any additional therapy. Uh, other than that, I would just say, you know, we we, we need the brain trust needs you, Herb. You gotta you gotta be with us a long time. <laughs> I'm not a. I wish I could promise that, but the Mets scared me. I mean, I really, I didn't expect it. Yeah. Ah. And so, How's your wife doing with this? She's not doing well at all. We're not doing well at all. Well, I can imagine. I can imagine. So, all right. You can, that's all. That's my report for today. I wish it were more positive. Well, hopefully it will be next week when you report it and you get yeah. some test right. results. Right, right. Well, thanks for sharing. I don't see you. But Jeff Wood. Yeah, I think I think we can say to Herb that, that we love Herb. Uh, I know I do and appreciate everything he's doing and know this is a horrible fight that he's in, well, as many are. I just wish the best. Yeah, all the best. Yes, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. We're all pulling for you, Herb. We want I, good results. I hear you. Let's hope. Yeah, you'd be there for us, for sure. And you have been. Yeah. Okay. Jeff Wood, what do you have for us this evening? Uh, something mundane compared to a couple of hard stories here tonight. And I sent my best to Mike Yancey and Ken Anderson and Herb, you as well. Um, all the best to you. Um, you know, my PSA has been rising. It's been doubling every six months. Um, it's it's up to 0.26. I'm going to get another PSA just to confirm it's above two. That helps satisfy the insurance companies to justify a PSMA scan. And that's kind of my next step. Um, met with a new doc to see if I can transfer my case to them. Um, just in a in a moving pattern but uh some time to think a little bit that's that's all i have okay good enough um larry fish you said you had something hold on a minute Herb. um jeff what did, where did you say your psa is at it's a in february it was 0.26 and I know that you've been considering doing a PSMA scan. What's the latest on that? Yeah, the suggestion from uh, Dana Rathkoff was was to get a second test to confirm it's above, you know, two point two. Um, you know, because sometimes I guess insurance companies will balk at it if it's if it's below point two. So 
I'm getting I'm getting that uh, the week after next, and then uh, I'll apply for you know then we'll put it in for a for the PSMA uh, scan at that point. Yeah, it might not show up much at point two. I mean that's that's pretty low. Yeah, it seems to be a lot of folks on this in this forum seem to be getting it at that point, and yeah, it, it it's not definitive by any means. And if you don't if it doesn't show anything, it probably just makes you want to do it again and another you know. Point five or point six. Yeah, don't be afraid to let it go that high if you need to. I mean, it's it's up to the doctor who, who, if the doctor thinks they'll see something at that level, but it's it, the uh, percentage of getting a result there is not not very high. It's yeah. like in the forty percent range or something. Her take on it was, "Hey, that'd be good if it said it showed nothing." I'm like, "Right, okay, <laughs> all right." <laughs> as long as it doesn't. Off. Yeah, as long as it doesn't deny getting one when you really need it, you know, at, at, at point six or so. Right. Well, I think that's exactly the problem, Jeff. We don't have enough experience with the payers as to how they're going to respond to these repeated CFMA tests. I mean, if we knew that the payers were, um, were sanguine about it, it wouldn't be a problem. But we're going to probably find out over the next year as, as more and more people them at the lower levels um but uh, what i'm hearing is that you've now shifted your care to dr radcock is that right um i i met with her um i'm stuck with the insurance with insurance that i have for this year um that msk is not covered like i got a one-time appointment with her approved and i'm willing i told her i'm willing to pay him out of you know out of pocket you know i don't care and then get treatment locally but she doesn't really feel comfortable directing local folks um she's a little concerned with them taking their eye off the ball and and her not totally being in the in the director's chair you know with without with me not being treated at an msk facility so it's, it's a little tricky i hope to have it have it pushed over to her when i get back to december of next year i can pick a new plan Make sure MSK is in it and and get fully under her care. Second opinion, no problem. Mm -hmm. She doesn't doing that. Okay. Yeah, I got a little time. I mean, you know, I kind of hope to be settled at this point, but I kind of have a little bit of time to get this in place. She seems like the right person anyway. Good. Okay, we got to keep moving here. <clears throat> Larry Fish, you said you had something quickly. Hang in there, Herb. I don't know that I use the word quickly, but <laughs> let's see if I, I did. Work. I used it. Okay. <laughs> I accept that. Uh, was I said on second thought because it's a little complex. Well, not really that complex compared to. I just want to preface this with two things, <laughs> one minute each. That uh, so now I've just been in this game from Novo Metastatic. PSA 300, over 300, seven years from that point, every seven years. And so somewhat newer guys, I want them to know that, you know, I had that Christmas tree, bone mets seven years ago and been fighting it this way and that. But that, you know, that's quite a bit of time compared to what original cancer statistics said. And I'm glad to be here and working still fighting. So I know other guys here have been longer, but I just want anybody who's been just in a few years to know that there's a long road to be on and uh, there's a lot of hope in the future. All right. And then the second thing which just happened is that sometimes these meetings can be a little hard to take, you know, hear a lot of really hard stories from people that we all know. And, um, it's a process to be able to live with that. I mean, doctors live with that all the time, but for laymen to listen to hard stories that are fighting a fight that has actually no exact conclusion, no really exact, no cure, it can be really hard. Sometimes you come out of a meeting, you get in a bad mood, depressed for a few days, but, but it's worth it. Um, over these seven and five years I've been here, six years I've been here, it's been extremely valuable. So I think everybody try to hang in there and learn how to process this problem you have to face of everybody's bad news. Um, okay, so uh, what I want to say is, so I've been in Darylutamide seven months. 
uh, it's done very, pretty well for me. And um, PSA is down, basically down. And um, I'm having a conflict with statins, serious conflict. Uh, I was on a 40 milligram rest of a statin. And there's a, whatever they call the highest level of drug interaction conflict with darolutamide specifically and statins. And it potentiates statins and also creates complications. And you can get serious cramps that can be uh, dangerous. Um, so I tried to cut down to 10 milligrams breast of a statin. Cut down to five milligrams. We're still getting a lot of cramps, and switched to Lipitor, which has a. I don't remember which way the scale goes, but whatever class one is the worst, and then this was class two. So, uh, but I switched to only ten milligrams of Lipitor, and um, was getting cramps on that, and I stopped Lipitor for a while, and then my cholesterol doubled from 170 something to three something, 300 something. And my triglycerides went through the roof. And that was my uh, primary care physician saying, you better talk to your oncologist. You guys maybe have to stop darolutamide and going back on the satin. You know, you're gonna have like, do you know what it's like to have a serious stroke or a heart attack? And uh, you, you were going along, you know, just on maybe another ADT or another, she doesn't really understand complexity of cancer. Well, then I found this drug. I don't know if anybody experienced with a pretty new Repatha. Not that new. This is a uh, fight statins, fights uh, cholesterol and triglycerides, but is not um, does not conflict with that. So I've ordered and started Repatha and I went back to 10 grams of addition of uh, Lipitor. And I'm hoping that that and some freak out diet changes, freak out lifestyle changes, can bring that bring that triglyceride cholesterol down to an incredible height. I don't know if anybody has been through any of this pathway and just wanted to open it up if there was something someone had to say or some idea. Is this the um, is this the drug that is um Bempedoic acid is that is it the same drug that you're taking? Which the the Repatha? Yeah, the Repatha. I heard this week. Um, I think it There's was a yesterday I heard yesterday morning. I think on NPR, the uh, Allison, whatever her name is, the health correspondent, talking about a new um, cholesterol drug that is an alternative to statins and yeah, um, I I, it's bempedoic acid but yes. i don't know the I don't name yeah no i um i can't remember the name i wrote it down somewhere nextel next plus something uh, but <clears throat> not any more effective than uh repatha from what i can see Repatha can help like 50% of the way that a, a strong statin can. This had the same kind of a result, sort of similar. It's a newer, I just just came out, it was just approved a few days ago. They're also both very expensive, I believe. Anyway, right. that's, that's good. What, bempedoic acid is Nexletol, N-E-X-L-E-T-O-L. Right. right. You might want just find out about this next little and strongly suggest listening to this piece um yesterday morning you'll find it on npr that that monday morning health piece they do and hear what she says and discuss that with your doc um because if, uh, if there are all it's just Latin, it's i don't have a doc who can understand and differentiate any of this stuff I made an appointment to see an endocrinologist. Hmm. Larry, you might want to give you might want to give Bayer patient assistance a call and talk to their nurses. You know they got people on call all the time, and just uh, talk to them about this drug interaction and what their experience is with it with Nubeca. Um, 
Because you're right. Yeah. You don't want to take you don't want to take chances here. Yeah. Well, I'm on a little bit on the risk taking side, but definitely good idea. I'm gonna call I'll call there. And I made yeah. that appointment. The appointment's not until May, middle of May is the earliest appointment. Right, but they'll they'll talk to you any time. You just ask to talk to a nurse, you know, and and, uh, and they've got they've got some good experts there that will yeah, give idea. some opinions. Yeah. Hmm. Good idea. I, yeah. I also, yeah. Go ahead, please. Uh, the other the other thing, Larry, is 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 to talk to your to your lady Karen Dudar, at, at your your oncologist, because she is How do you, yeah. about and going in. She should she should be able to work with you on trying to find an alternative. That's part of her job. If she's putting you on something that causes a side effect, then she should be working with you to to come up with an alternative. And um, so, have you had have you had a discussion with Dr. Altio? Yeah, initial. I mean, going back and forth between my primary care and Dr. Altio and. Uh, various issues and you know it, it's really need to be an expert on the risks of these side effects I can take a little bit of cramping but I don't want my heart muscle to cramp right yeah be careful drug, drug interactions are nothing to play around with yeah when was, when was the last time you you raised this with Dr. Audio I mean is it in the last couple of months or like a year ago no, I've only been on Daryl in my seven months. This started, you know, it's been going on for a little while with my oncologist. And it wasn't until uh, 10 days ago that I got these, blood, you know, these lipid and cholesterol, lipid profile results that freaked me out. And that's what led to my speaking was these results that I hadn't seen before. Mm -hmm. Are you taking CoQ10? No, you think I should? Well, check with Dr. Audio, but it is it definitely helps with the cramps. If you're taking if you're on statins, it's a good thing to take whilst you're on statins because it yeah. it does help cramps. Um and you know, again, I know Len's not big on these supplements, but if you look if you look at CoQ10 and the Memorial Sloan Kettering list that I put around, um, you know, it's pretty valid and, and it's something to discuss with Dr. Audio. Len, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, CoQ10 might very well uh, help. I, I have read about that also, Rick. Um, I mean, so, you know, uh, Larry, I was taking Rosuvastatin is that what you said you were on? I couldn't make it out. Originally, yes, originally. I switched to Lipitor. Yeah, okay. I was taking uh, Rosuvastatin, 10 milligrams, and I was on darolutamide. And that's when I learned that uh, the interaction could raise the level of Rosuvastatin to, uh, well, fivefold. So, like, I was really taking 50 milligrams, which is above the highest uh, range that, uh, in the pill they, they provide. Um, I didn't have any cramping or any symptoms at all, except I had a very low cholesterol and, and very low LDL. Uh, I eventually did lower the dose. But anyway, I was only aware of darolutamide reacting with rosuvastatin, not any other statin. No, also, it's it's just a level of the how they rate the level of the drug interactions. Whatever is the highest, which I think is a level one or a level five. That, that's uh, um, Lipitor is a level four, level four. It's not as bad, but you do get cramps. I've been getting cramps. I get cramps in my hands, sometimes at night, in my leg. Not serious, though. Mm. I, I think I need to, since I just started this path just like a month ago, it was hard to get approved. And I just want to try and see what it does uh, before I see the chronologist and then look into all these variants ways or even away from darolutamide but PSA came way down so uh, or the holiday and going back and so I'm sort of playing that game I just was I really like this idea of uh, talking to Bayer and I'll talk to my doctor yeah the problem there is 
I think Peter, you had this experience. The bear is just going to say, "Well, we we can talk to your doctor, but we we can't give you medical advice." You know, that's that's yeah. a liability for them. They they don't know you as a patient. They'll they'll say, "Who's your doctor?" and they'll want to talk to Doctor Audio, but I'm not sure. Yeah, you know, that's going to really I, help you. I and it it can be very frustrating. Plus the fact that once you report it, they're going to have you. They're going to ask you to to report the uh, adverse event, so you're going to go through that adverse event reporting. Um, I mean, I have not had a good experience with the with the nurse, the the Bayer trained nurses that support. Um, when I was on a call with them last year, they knew less than we do, and they basically come back with a script. So don't get your don't get your expectations up too high, Larry, with, 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 with that. No, it has to be noodled and into the, um, into the weeds and try to figure out what's the best path to go on. Uh, I'd, I'd look at, um, look at the, dr the drug you're taking, Repata. I'd look at this next Lutal, and I'd discuss both of them with Dr. Audio. Um, because if she doesn't know what they're about, she's going to have somebody at Memorial Sloan Kettering who does. So she's going to have you talk to the right person at Memorial Sloan Kettering, which you may not get from, from discussing with your PCP. But that, that's, I think, where I would, that's where I would go. She said, I, I'm not going to prescribe, I'm not going to talk, no, go talk to your oncologist and see an endocrinologist. So I'm doing those two things. I just wanted to bring this all up and, you know, over the next couple of months, I'll probably be reporting back something. Good. Well, I appreciate we're, anxious to, we're, anxious, we're anxious to hear this. Yep. Yeah. I guess so, other people so, are going to this one day. So, so, Rick, without getting into it, uh, I just want to let you know that I had an interaction. I, I talked to Maria Calkins at, uh, at Biovent uh, over the weekend when I was at the uh, P. P CRI conference. She says hello, and she she enjoyed hearing my story about Orgovix. Talking about Great. drug interactions. Anyway, Jim Jeffries, what what do you have for well, us? Well, I'm I'm just coming off my drug holiday, uh, so I started Eligard yesterday. Uh, I had a year of no drugs, and things were going well, and the PSA started up again. And um, I'm going to go on um, Erlita. Apalutamide, and um, we'll see how that goes. So, just wanted to give an update. Okay, well, we're with you. How long were you on uh, ADT before? I was on for two years, off for a year and a half, on for a year and a half, and then uh, off. Well, I st it goes back to 2017, so I was off exactly a year. February of uh, 2022 to February 23. So I'm, now I'm starting Good. back. So I've been off Has a year. Has your testosterone come back up each time? Uh, testosterone comes back up, uh, yes. But the, 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 my, my PSA historically is low. Like it's a, it's a 0.40. But why I was on up until uh, January, it was a, a 0.06. For a year okay so things are going well, on okay good enough a number of us have been there you'll do, you'll do okay just keep watching it keep a chart on it keep yes. a close eye on it yes well what, what's pay level jim with, when you go back on i'm sorry what is your psa level my psa right now is a 0.40 Okay, and are you are you going to go back on a ADT drug as well, like Orgovic yes, or Lupron or something? Like that? Eligard. Eligard, Eligard injections uh, every three months, twenty-two point five milligrams. Started that yesterday, and received the okay. uh, the FedEx package today of the uh, 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 Erlita, the uh, apalutamide. Okay. If you okay. get a lot of uh, fatigue from the Erlita, 
talk to the doc about switching to darolutamide. Okay, now can that switch happen anytime if the uh... Yeah, it's especially I'm if not you say... I'm not married to uh to the uh Erlita or anything if I have some really tough time with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you tell them you can't tolerate it, of course they'll they'll switch you. Or they should. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then it, when you you know there's lies damn lies statistics uh, the more i read the more confused i get about uh seizures but um you know i think there's there's a risk in walking across the street so yeah there's a small it. risk but there, it's a real risk yeah the, so, the bigger yeah. issue that i want to ask you, did you have you done a psma scan before you started your taking the MPT drugs again Yes, I just com just completed a PSMA scan, and I had uh, uh, Dr. Um, Dinesman over Fox Chase took a look at that. I uh, have some, um, maybe some candidates for um, um, radiation, but not not too too uh, substantial. Do we know what it saw specifically? I'm sorry, I I didn't hear that. It saw specifically what what did the PSMA scan show? Well it had well, I'm sorry, I don't have it right in front of me. I apologize. But it basically came up with a couple of spots where uh the thought was maybe we uh consider radiation just to those few spots. Okay, good. And that's under advisement. We haven't made the decision yet. Good. Okay, well, good luck with this, this, and uh, keep us informed how it goes. And, uh, right. It's a good suggestion by Len that you know, you're not wedded to, to Erlita. You, you know, if you start feeling weird or brain fog, craziness or whatever, uh, talk about switching. There's been a lot of studies going on that uh, that give a lot of credit to darolutamide these days. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. Let's finish up, uh, Julian. I miss. I skipped over you before. Oh, you had a quick thing to bring up, right? Uh, I just got my test results back. Uh, my testosterone is coming back up. It's at one twenty three now. I can feel it. And uh, they, the, my Dr. E did an ultra sensitive PSA, so still undetectable. Great. Great. You're a champ. That's been going on for several, several months. Okay. You're a champ. Good for you. Okay. I think we've caught everybody who's who wanted to say something. Did I miss anybody? No. Yeah, Peter, I did 30 seconds. First, uh, this is overwhelming. I must confess that uh, whoever that said it earlier, uh, I'm going to go watch a Hallmark movie with my wife after this, just to try and try and get uh, back to a good place. Um, I joined for the first time last month, Proton SBRT at the Mayo Clinic, Rochester. And I just want to a quick update since my introduction. My, um, Eric, Eric, I'm my, sorry, I've got, to, I've got to cut you off. We have another group starting in this room in yeah, fact, it's some okay. of the there's nothing there's nothing i can share for this group anyway so well, thank you all it's we, been really can, helpful can we okay. give you priority give you priority next week can we well give you a I, I, I gotta be honest i think this group is way out of my league as far as where you're at you're all the veterans of the war against prostate cancer you know and i'm i'm debating what how long i need to stay on ADT. I have a very, very different journey right now. I would be in favor if you have a high group, if you set up a high risk group. But frankly, um, I'm overwhelmed here. And I think my, my journey is just very different than yours right now. But you, you have been a, a great group. There's a lot to learn. I just don't think this is the right one for me to, to continue with. But thank you all for that. Okay. Well, thank you, Eric. Thank yeah, you this is long. How long is your ADT, Eric? Yeah. How long are you EDT for? Well, it's five months now. I'm probably going to go eight or nine months. My my score um, 
Okay, so what I'm going to suggest, and if it's, not, if it's okay for Peter, we don't usually do this, but you might want to join his low intermediate group where you'll get a lot of good information, um, but you're not going to get that much about dealing with the side effects of ADT because we try not to discuss ADT in that group. Okay, but well, I'm, you know. Yeah, yeah, and, and thank you, Rick. And I, I just, I just feel like I'm a tweener. I'm either neither here nor there, neither fish nor fowl. So um, if you do get a high risk, I think that would be great. And I may not be the only one in that situation, but uh, I've learned a, a huge amount. I just hope my my journey is very different than than this. We, we all okay. hope that we all. That's what we all hope. But uh, this is this is tough conversations we've dealt with tonight. Yeah, and um. Thank you all for hanging in there. And I mean, the bottom line is we're here for each other. That's right. That's that's it. Right. Uh, we've heard some pretty bad news tonight, but we're uh, we're there for each other. We're not going anyplace. It's, uh, it's, um, we don't want to turn our back on each other. OK, I love you all. I care for yeah. you all. Thank you for everything. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Good luck, Herb. OK, right. Take care, guys. Um, Kim and John, we've got a close to to separate the recordings, guys. So we'll close the room right now and then come right back in. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. Bye bye.